I'm working on some titanium videos, but this one needs to be first. This deals with the three biggest mistakes you can make when TIG welding titanium. This is aimed toward people that are fairly new to titanium, like maybe you're working in a job shop environment where somebody might bring you a titanium job, or you're doing a side hustle, somebody might bring you a titanium job, a titanium foot peg off a, off a motocross bike, or maybe a titanium exhaust of some kind that looks just like a stainless exhaust. We're gonna deal with how to identify titanium and the three biggest mistakes. By the way, keep watching until number one because that's the one that might scrap the part. Let's do it. There are three really big mistakes you can make when TIG welding titanium. Let's deal with the third biggest mistake, and that is just using a standard cup. Standard cups don't cut it on titanium. All those wonderful colors like a peacock you see around the weld, those might be fine on stainless, but you don't want to see them on titanium. Titanium is a reactive metal, and it reacts with elements in the air and forms hard, brittle compounds on the surface of the metal. And if you use a small cup like this, a standard cup like you would use to weld steel or stainless steel, you're going to have a hardened, what they call an alpha case, which is a brittle material, and it's no good. The second biggest mistake when TIG welding titanium is not using a purge when you are getting the backside molten or even really hot. Titanium needs a purge on the backside. Now there are exceptions if you're doing a lap joint on something that's fairly thick and the backside is not getting red hot or molten, you might get away without a purge. But even when I'm using a good cup, which would normally be a good cup for stainless steel like a Jazzy 10, it's not going to matter much if I'm not purging the backside if I'm melting all the way through. Now this is something a little bit thinner than 40,000 so I'm definitely melting all the way through. I'm purposely melting all the way through for the purposes of this video and the demonstration. So even though this bead is much less discolored than the previous well with the standard cup, when you look at the back side of it, you see that it's severely oxidized. It's like a chalky substance on there and when we wire brush it off and take a closer look at it, we're going to see some real problems. We've got some built-in cracks all over the place, little spider cracks, and that's not surprising. A full penetration titanium weld needs to be purged, period, period, period. That brings us to the number one biggest mistake when TIG welding titanium, and that is not recognizing it as titanium and using a different rod, like a stainless rod. Sometimes titanium is used in place of stainless, so some parts that we're accustomed to seeing made out of stainless are now made out of titanium. And if you don't know that, if you don't do some testing ahead of time to verify that what you're welding is titanium, you can get in a jam. I picked up a stainless rod, a 309 stainless rod here, just for demonstration purposes. It will weld. I mean, it's got a puddle, it's flowing, flowing really well. In fact, that's the problem. You might not recognize it right away, until you've welded an inch or so. You'll notice something, something's wrong, something's going awry, but it, it's, it's making a puddle, it's making a bead. Now you might think this is really basic and it's stupid and it would never happen, but I've seen it happen, so I'm addressing it here. Let's see how long it takes to hear that thing crack. That's the first of many little ticks that you'll hear as this cools down. That weld is hard as glass. It's just so brittle. That whole weld would have to be removed now in order to salvage a part and sometimes that's just not feasible. Now this can happen by not recognizing the part is titanium but it can also happen just by having extra rods laying on your bench and picking up the wrong rod. I've seen it happen. It's not good. Fortunately, there's a quick and easy way to identify titanium, and that's with a grinder doing a spark test. The first sample here is just plain carbon steel. You notice those orange sparks, quite a few of them. The second sample here that I'll, I'll do is a piece of 300 series stainless steel. Not nearly as many sparks, kind of a darker orange colored. But then on a piece of titanium, bright white sparks, kind of unmistakable if you just go to the trouble of doing this on an area that it won't hurt anything. One more view from a different perspective. This is carbon steel, 
freeze frame right here. This is 300 series stainless steel, much fewer sparks, and a freeze frame. And this is titanium, bright white sparks and a freeze frame. Unmistakable. You just have to go to the trouble of doing it. So let me give you a little quick preview of a video I have coming soon. I'm using this Furic Sippy BBW cup. So it's made out of high temp thermoplastic, which means it won't break. It's not ceramic. It's not glass. It's what's known as a flood cup, and it's going to provide a lot of shielding. I'll be getting my purge gas for the back side with this aerospace test fixture made for me by none other than Adam Booth A-Bomb 79. I'll be using a dual flow meter so I can get purge gas and torch gas with only one cylinder. And so by following all the proper procedures, using the flood cup, using purge gas, using titanium filler rod, I'll get a silver weld that will be ductile and will be good for service. Stay tuned for that video coming soon. It's got plenty of tight arc shots as well as tips for prep and cleaning. I want to take a minute and show you some of the changes we've made to one of our most popular TIG kits. We're trying to add value without adding cost. It's the Weldmonger Furic Arsenal kit, a very popular kit. This one is showing the, the one for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. We also have them for 920 style torches. Let's take a quick look at the old version. It's Furic cups, starting with the 8 and going all the way up to the BBW, the 8, 10, the 12 ceramic, and the BBW. But what we've done is we've added a 4 through 8 standard ceramic cup to make this kit even more useful for most every situation. The large furic cups are, are great for stainless, inconel, titanium, but sometimes you don't need all that gas and you don't want to use all that gas if it's a Sunday afternoon and the welding stores are closed. So we, we're, we got you covered here going all the way down to a number four cup. This 332nd furic gas lens works with all these cups. So let's take a look at swapping out the normal hardware, the stuff that comes with most torches with the furic arsenal kit hardware. One benefit that you notice right away is it just shrinks the overall size of the torch. It just kind of makes it more maneuverable, makes it be able to reach into tighter spots. And the clear cup that comes with it, the number 8 cup, really lights things up. I started using clear cups strictly to film. I was kind of skeptical, but I, I saw right away they really helped me see better. The number 8 clear cup is good for AC and DC. This is a little plate with a bead on plate here with I've, I've scribed lines about an eighth of an inch apart just so you can see the detail. See how well this cup lights things up. It really helps. The Ceramic Jazzy 10 is a DC cup. Great for stainless steel, chromoly, carbon steel, tool steel, even some light titanium work. This is some 4130 chromoly and this is the second pass. I'm doing a little pedal pumping here. But another benefit of a cup like this is if you get a really good shielded first pass, the second pass just goes in a whole lot better. If you need a little bit more shielding with a little longer stick out, the Ceramic 12 is a good choice. Here's some stainless steel 120 wall tubing. With stainless steel, just a little tip, you want to get that puddle started quickly, get moving quickly to kind of outrun the heat. You don't always just want to weld with less amperage. Sometimes hotter and faster is better. The clear BBW is a great cup for titanium. The bigger the cup, generally speaking, the more gas flow it requires. And this one might require as much as 35 or 40 CFH, but when you're welding titanium, the little extra argon is just cost of doing business. It's, it's necessary. It comes with the long cap, the medium cap, and the short button cap. Now, where would you want to use these cups? Well, again, if it's a Sunday afternoon and you're, you're, you've, your tank is down to about two or 300 and you've got a job you need to get out and it, the job doesn't really require super excellent shielding, a four or a five cup makes sense. It also makes sense for flash tacking. You don't waste a lot of gas while you're just doing a little, a little quick burst tack on some sheet metal corner joints. There's a purpose for every cup. You know, one size does not fit all. The number five cup is great for aluminum butt joints, can actually help with penetration by limiting that cleaning action and kind of focusing the energy on the puddle. 
Another reason to have a good assortment of cups is sometimes you might get into a situation like this where you're walking the cup on a small fillet weld. You don't want to use a whole bunch of extra gas. It doesn't require it. When you've got that cup right up, right up against the metal like that, it requires a little bit less gas flow than it does if you've got a long stick out and, and freehand in it. A number six is also a really good all-around cup for aluminum. This is an outside corner joint on eighth inch thick material. If you need a little longer stick out than you can get with the six, take it up to a number seven, just increase the argon flow. About two and a half CFH per cup size gets you right in the ballpark usually. And then there's the number eight, which is kind of a really good all around cup for stainless sand, chromoly and carbon steel. This little demonstration really shows the difference between the standard hardware that comes with a TIG torch as opposed to a stubby gas lens. I'm using the same long stick out here. It's a half inch stick out. I'm going to use the same stick out on all these cups. This is sped up 4x, but you can see it's just kind of squiggly. I'm losing shielding at that stick out at about 20 CFH. Not very good for stainless steel. Now here I'm using the same exact stick out with the same flow rate with a stubby gas lens. And it's like somebody flipped the switch on. Now all of a sudden it's cleaned up. Now if I put the Jazzy 10 on there with that secondary diffuser, I'm going to get a little bit better shielding. Not like night and day here, but it's still, it's even better. And if I went up to a number 12, it would improve a little bit more. It just depends on what you need and how much gas you want to use. Well, that is a quick rundown on our new improved Arsenal kit. Again, this is the kit for the 17, 18, 26 style. We also have one for 920 style torches. Same cups, just different mounting hardware. If you're still using the old hardware that came with your torch, you're going to notice a huge difference here on steel and stainless steels. If you want to get a closer look, just go to weldmonger.com. Go up to TIG Welding Accessories and then drop down and over here to Furic Arsenal Kits. And there they are for the 17, 18, 26 as well as for the 920. Once you open that page up, there's a few other images that kind of clear things up for you and show you what's inside the kit, all the contents, and inside the tray right there. And then there's another piece of information here to help you make sure you're getting the right one for your torch. And then all you got to do is add it to the cart.